Right, hello everybody and welcome back to another video. We're going up to great news this morning, but before we get into that, if you're new, hit the subscribe button please, much appreciated, and don't forget to hammer that thumbs up for us. A few things to go through this morning, great news, Salmon Pants has finally gone. Stuart Donald's reduced his shares, although he's still got some shares, but you know what I mean. KLD is now the, the main shareholder with 51%. Satori's got 30%, which leaves 90% over, so I think, I think the majority of that's Stuart Donald's and a couple of other stringers on, but, you know, it's all good news, which means that now the club can start moving forward, we don't have to wait for anyone else to take over, obviously that was the big news of a takeover, which has been kept under, under secret, two minutes, which goes to show that good things come to those who wait. The amount of people I've seen stressing and slagging everybody off online has absolutely been ridiculous. People need to just chill and just let things happen. If things are going to happen, that you've got to let them do. They don't just happen overnight when you're taking, when you're buying a multi-million pound freaking company. They don't just happen like that and like that and like that. You've got to give it time. People were panicking about that. Was it the fans together bollocks? I was never worried about them, was I? Cryptocurrency and football. It might happen, but I don't think it'll happen in our generation. And then also. There's the big carry on about John Reese, we're not big carry on, but everyone thought John Reese was coming. Whether he's got any part of the, the, the remaining 19 which Stuart Donald's got or what, uh, only time will tell. But the news this morning, which is great to hear, is KLT 51% shareholder and one to Tory 30%. So that's 81% between the two of them, which means that the club can push on and the club can do stuff. KLT essentially has the has the say, and like obviously one to Tories is number two. Great news to wake up to. Uh, I'm buzzing, I'm smiling. I've even been drinking every six in a row cup. So I thought, obviously, get on, let you know for people who haven't seen it. But if you haven't seen it, then you must be living under a rock this morning. Also, obviously, our fearless leader, Paul, is still on his jollies. But it's also his birthday today, so happy birthday, Paul. I hope, you, hope you're not getting too sunburnt, and I hope you're not scaring the skids, cutting around the pool with your speedos that the S's fell off. But I let you get on there and let you know Takeover looks to be done. Obviously, Stuart Donald still got some shares. So, there was an official club statement released this morning. Uh, Salmon Pants has gone, which is the which is main one. Stuart Donald still has um, has shares in the club. He's reduced his down. But KLD, Juan Satori, 51% and 30% respectively. And that's what we've been waiting to hear. Let's be honest, it really is. Um, moving on to a couple of other things. Uh, just to just to, to bug up the video more than anything, players that have been linked to. Um, there's been a lot of thing about that Jack Rodoni from uh, from Wimbledon. Now I can't remember much about him. I know he was instrumental in Wimbledon's season last year. Um, he's, a, he's 21 year old. He's a young player. Uh, Wimbledon seem desperate to keep all of them. There's us, Bristol City, and Huddersfield, I think, and there's a couple of other teams that are sniffing around them. Apparently, we've all put a one million pound bid in. Uh, they've all been rejected. But apparently Sunderland's still heavily in talks with Wimbledon and the player about bringing up to Sunderland. Now, I was reading a statement of the uh, the Wimbledon manager, and he obviously wants to keep him. And uh, the reason behind him want to keep him is that if he stays at Wimbledon, he's going to be getting guaranteed first-team football. Now, is the 21-year-old going to come, come to Sunderland and get straight in, the, uh, straight in the starting 11 to build his career, uh, help us out in the championship? I mean, time will tell. I mean... I don't think he will. I think he'd come and he'll get stuck in the youngins or he might be on the bench, he'd be a squad player. Um, but let's say he is a good player, he's a very promising uh, prospect for the future. And it's all about building your squad. Um, he would be a good addition. He would be a good addition because he's, he's, a, he's a hell of a young footballer who's got bags of potential. Um, but we'll, we'll wait and see what happens on that one. Like I say, Wimbledon is desperate to keep him. We... Are interested in him, yeah, but then again, as, as you know, as Sun supporters, we're interested by every man and the dog in every transfer window. And there's another thing people get stressed about we haven't signed this, we haven't signed that. You can't really officially sign people yet. I think it's the 1st of, Jan 1st of July when people's contracts run out, or the, the, 31st, the 30th of June, people's contracts run out, and then you can start signing new contracts on the 1st of July and bringing players in. Yes, the season starts a bit earlier, so the transfer window should have opened a bit earlier, but yet again, don't panic about transfers. Speakman knows what he's doing. He's working alongside Alex Neil. Now the, the ownership thing's been sorted out. So KLD and Satori, they have the final say on, on movement. Well, KLD has a final say, but Satori's got a big stake as well. <coughs> Sorry for coughing. 
But signings will start to happen. We will start bringing transfers in. And I do believe they're going to be good, effective ones that are going to improve our squad, which is going to help us push on next season. Another one I've seen, um, which I've seen people mention before. I remember when we got linked with uh, when we got linked with Jack Ruddy. I mean, me and Paul weren't over the... I was impressed by Jack Woody. Yes, he's got loads of loads of potential and loads of potential. That's full of shit. He's he's kicking on. He's not nearly the same age as me. He's got loads of experience, which would have been good to pass on to Patterson. But loads of people in the comments were all talking about Ben Foster. He's a free agent, this and the other. Although I would love to have Ben Foster, I, I was dismissing it tonight. He'll never come this up north. He'll never come this far up north. But apparently he's been holding talks with Middlesbrough. So if that is true, if he's been holding talks with Middlesbrough, why don't we get in touch? And Ben Foster is the number one, and Patterson working underneath them, learning of him. That would bring on Patterson's career, and we'd have a top, we'd have a top draw goalkeeper goal in Ben Foster. Now, if he's willing to talk to Middlesbrough, that means he must be willing to come up north. So, therefore, let's get him in. Let's have chat. Sunderland's a bigger club than Middlesbrough. You know what I mean? We've got a bigger fan base. We are a bigger club. So, if he's looking just for going to the club of size to see out his career and all that, why not give us a pass? Eh? Come on, Ben. I know you're an avid YouTube fan because you're a YouTuber yourself. Let's get up. And let's uh, let's give it a pass. Eh? Also, Cameron Archer from Aston Villa. Um, I think Villa are, Villa are very keen on uh, deciding where he goes. I don't think that I think they're trying to take it, make it their decision rather than Cameron Archer's decision. I think they want the Aston Villa, which is understandable. It's a young player, young, he's another promising prospect from Villa. They want to decide where he goes so that he can benefit the most from that. Uh, apparently, Sunderland's a club that Aston Villa like the look of. Um, obviously, we've had some good. Loan moves in the uh, loan stars in the past, which have then went on to clubs and had brilliant careers. You know what I mean? So coming out, he would be an interesting one if the broadhead doesn't come through. Because um, I know we're in talks, but Aston Villa have said uh, not Aston Villa. That's full of shit. That, um, Everton have said that they want to get a pre-season out of them before they decide, uh, which isn't ideal. <coughs> but then again, Tottenham also said the same about Clark. But I've got to be about Clark in a bit. Uh, but coming out yet. He's had, well, he's, he's, he scores goals. He's, he's a promising player. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd be I'd be excited to see him come in, play alongside Stewart. But obviously, if this is all case. This is all just people have been linked with, people with stories have made. Um, like I say, over the next week or two, that's when you'll start seeing players coming in and signing. Because obviously, then we've only, uh, after June, we've only got four weeks until the season starts. So they're going to have to bring people in to start having the proper pre season, you know what I mean? Uh, the other goalkeeper was that. Um, what I mentioned last time from Leicester, they're unsure what they want to do with him. Whether it's loan, they said they don't want to loan him up, but they're listening for permanent deals. But there's, there's quite a lot of clubs in for him. I can't remember his name at the minute. Should have really wrote that down, but I've, I've only just remembered about him when I was talking about it. Um, but going to Jack Clark, Jack Clark, obviously still at Tottenham. But we were on uh, interested. We, we, it was reported that we were in talks with Everton Spurs about loan and Broadhead and Clark back again. But well, apparently Sonnen's actually in talks to buy Jack Clark. Uh, three years after Tottenham signed him for £10 million, Sonnen's in talks with uh, Tottenham to actually sign Jack Clark. Now, that'd be good. That'd be great for me. Um, if you'd asked Paul this a few months ago, he would have said, no chance. But now I think he'd be happy as well. Uh, in the Championship, Jack Clark would be a really effective player. Like I've, I've said many times since the season finished, the Championship's a different way of football than what it is in League One. And I do believe Jack Clark will be very effective in this league. With his creativity, with his speed, his skill, and just the way he plays, I th and I think, especially depending on who else we bring in, if we bring in the likes of Archer, or even get Broadhead back, uh, we'll get Roberts tied down. We've got play fast, skillful players that can create things and really cause problems, and it'll it'll, be, it'll do us the world of good in the championship. Anyway, finish off. You most of the same on social media. Big congratulations to Luke Nine. He got married at the weekend. <coughs> As, as I've seen some of the pictures of the, of the big day, and as you can imagine, he had a massive smile from grin to, uh, from ear to ear. But that's just Luke going nine on a daily basis, isn't it? Big congratulations, Luke. Can't wait to see you next season on that pitch, doing what you do, loving Sunderland. Just a quick video, just to let you all know about the takeover. KLD Satori, 51% KLD, 30% Satori. Salmon Pants has finally pissed off. Happy days. Stuart Donald's still got, a, still got some shares, but he's no longer the high up there. KLD's major, Satori's the, the second one. Things are going to finally start pushing forward. Decisions can be made, we don't need to wait for somebody else. Uh, obviously, me and Paul will keep our eyes in, in, in social media with different things like that. And 
we'll be back with any news if they come. Happy birthday again, Paul. Enjoy the rest of your holiday and hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. Most appreciated. Have a great day, fellas and lasses. And see you later.